Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. Today in the third part of my Divi Zero to Hero series, we're going to be looking at the structure of the page in terms of sections, rows, columns and modules. These are the basic building blocks of any Divi website. OK, without further ado, let's get going. I've started as usual with the brand new installation of WordPress and the first thing I'm going to do is add a new page. So I'm going to go to Dashboard, Pages, Add New Page. I'm going to call this page Home Page and I'm going to click on Use Divi Builder. Once we're here, you probably remember from the previous tutorial that we have three options. The one I'm going to choose is Build from Scratch and this will take me into the builder with a brand new page. Uh, you'll see here that I'm being prompted to insert a row and this uh, gives me two options, add a new row or add a row from a library. I don't actually have any rows in my library, so I'm going to add a new row and I'm going to add a two column row. Now, it then prompts me to start adding modules. I'm not going to do that for a moment. We're just going to talk a little bit about the structure of the page. So Divi has given us a section and by default that section will be the full width of the viewport and within the section it has given me a row and I've just chosen to make that a two column row. Um, very easy to change that if I wanted a single column row but anyway we'll stick with our two column row for now. So it's given me a section and a row. The row by default is the uh, content width. And you'll remember in the previous tutorial when we looked at the customizer, you can set the uh, content width. So let's have a quick look at that. And you can see here that the width was set to 1366. And that is what we're looking at here, a row that is 1366 wide. The other thing you'll notice is that there by default is some spacing. It's actually padding. Padding is always inside, so you're padding it out. You're padding your content out and a margin always goes outside whatever element it is you're working with. So there is some inbuilt padding to the section and there is also some inbuilt padding to the row. The, the setting for that amount of padding by default, it also comes from the customizer. So if we have a look here, we can see that it's set to four for the uh, section and to two for the row. That four is actually a percentage of the width of the element itself. So if we come back here to the uh, section, this space here is actually 4% of the width of the uh, viewport that I'm working with. And in the row, the spacing here is 2% of the width of the row. So this is 4% uh, of 1920. I'm not going to do the maths in my head. And this is 2% of the 1366. Now, it's a bit academic. I mean, uh, if you see something different here, it's because someone or you has changed it in the customizer. But we can change it all in Divi anyway. So I just wanted to explain where this default uh, spacing comes from. In terms of organising your content, really you should look at a section as a, a meaningful sort of chunk of your page, if you like. And say you were going to summarise your page and you were going to summarise it into headings, each of those, those headings, for example, would be uh, a section. That's the sort of sensible, logical and um, semantic way to structure your content. So say it was an About Us page, the first bit might be Introduction, second section might be The Team, third section might be our services and the fourth section might be testimonials. So if that was going to be your About Us page and you were just going to give an overview of your business, those are the four sections you might break it down into. So that's what you should see a section as, a, a chunk, if you like, of meaningful content. Within the section, you then have a row or multiple rows. You can have as many rows as you want of content. Uh, if you want to add another row, you simply just click here and you can add another row underneath the first. So now we have two rows. And then within the row, you have a column. And then within the columns, you have modules. Uh, again, you can change the column structure. If you want to make this a three column row, it's very easy to do that by going into this settings icon here. And you can go up to four columns. Uh, there's all sorts of weird and wacky combinations of columns. If you choose this one, for example, you end up with this wide column on the left and the two smaller columns on the right. So lots of flexibility in Divi to lay things out how you want. I'm going to go back to my two column layout 
once you've got your section and row set up, you can come in and start adding modules. And there's a big choice of modules in Divi. Again, future lessons, I'm going to run through all of these and show you how they all work. But say, for example, you wanted text, uh, you can either scroll through to find it. They're in alphabetical order or you can just start typing at the top here and it will then give you all the different ones and you can choose text. By default, you'll end up with some little placeholder text in here. But of course, you can go into the settings and cut and paste text in here. Be careful if you are pasting from something like Word because you can end up bringing in all sorts of weird uh, control characters and things. You really want to be pasting plain text in here uh, if at all possible. Let's go to the right hand column and we'll add a different type of module. Let's add an image, for example. Then to add an image, you simply uh, click either on the image itself or in the little uh, star icon here. So let's click on the image. I don't have anything in my media library at the moment, uh, apart from a few logos. So I'm going to upload an image. Um, they're off screen at the moment. So I'm going to uh, upload an image that I downloaded from uh, Pexels. In fact, I'm going to upload a slice of cake. So here we are, here's my slice of cake being uploaded. And once the upload is finished, you then have the choice to add it into your layout. So here we are, we have some text on the left hand side and a piece of cake on the right hand side. Once you've built your first section, you can add another one. And to add sections, two different options. You can duplicate the section that you've got if you actually want a copy of it. So you can do that and you can then go in and uh, edit the content and change it. Or the other way is to hover and click on this little blue icon at the bottom here and you're then given a menu with a few different options. You either can add a new section, you can add a section from the library, so you have the opportunity to save and store sections that you use frequently in the library. And we'll go over that in more detail in a minute. The next section is to add a regular section which is exactly the same as we did previously. So you can come in and add a new two column section. And again, you get prompted to add the modules, which you can either do now or you can click out of this and come back and add the modules later. The next type of section you can add is called a speciality section. It gives you lots of different layouts. So you're not constrained by the number of columns that you get if you were just adding a simple section. So if, for example, we were to add this speciality section here what we're actually what we've actually got is the opportunity to add a module on the right hand side so we can add our cake again on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we have the option to add various rows it's actually even more flexible than it looks from the little icon when you come in here to to add the section even though this shows a single column here and two underneath, you actually have more flexibility. And when you come in here, we can see that the first row can have one, two or three columns. So let's add a three column row. But we then do actually also have the option to add another row, which could be, say, a two column row. Uh, and in fact, you can keep going and add as many different rows as you want. So this speciality section is really quite flexible and you can build up some quite complicated layouts. And again, there are various different versions of this uh, with various different layouts, which you can add. And essentially the green bits are the bits that you can choose how many rows you want to add. And the orange bit is the fixed bit where you can just add a single module. So orange for the module and green for rows. And Lots of different uh, interesting layouts that you can build up from that. The final type of section is a full width section. And it's a little bit misleading, really, because all sections are full width by default. But what it's actually giving you, I'll tell you what, I'm going to delete this, give ourselves a little bit more space, and we're going to add in a full width section here. And the full width section we're going to add is a full width header section. I'm going to delete this first section so we can see what we've actually been given. So as well as your section, which is full width, within it you have a module which is also full width with all sorts of settings in it. And these settings are specific to this particular type of module. So the kind of things you can do, for example, is you, well, obviously you've got a title here. You can add a subtitle if you want. So more info here. You can have one button. If you want a second button, you can simply add the text that you want for the second button to appear. 
in the design of this, you can choose uh, the layout. So at the moment it's left aligned. You can choose to have it center aligned. The background at the moment is a solid color. You can get rid of the solid color and you can add, for example, a background image. So I can have my piece of cake as a background for my entire section, which is a bit weird, but possible. So all sorts of um, different things that you can you can choose. But the, the, the main point is that you're adding a section that is the full width of the screen. But within it, there is a module that is also the full width of the screen. So if we maybe look at one more type of full width module, let's have a look at a full width image module. Um, I mean, literally, it just is that basically you'll end up with a section and that whole section will be filled up with your enormous slice of cake. So again, you've got a full width section and then within that section, you've got this full width image module with the various settings that you can use. So those are your different types of section. I'm going to go back, delete all of the sections and I'm left with my default section and my prompt to add my row. Let's have a quick look at some of the other settings. So the first one here is move, and this allows you to change the order of sections. So if we had, for example, another section in here, so we'll put in another regular section. So we've now got um, two sections. And if we wanted to move this section to be above this section, we can simply go on the move here. We can drag it up and it will move that section to be above the other section. Next, you have the gear icon here with the section settings. You will find this little gear icon on all sections, all rows. If you click on it on a row, you will also find it on the columns inside the row and you'll find it once you've uh, added a module. So let's pop our text module in again here. You'll find you've also got this settings icon on the text module. So that's that one. I will be covering all the different options in the next tutorial. Uh, there's rather too many to go through uh, without making this, this tutorial really way too long. So I'm just going to run over the basic things today and then we'll come back in and we'll go through all of these different items uh, one by one in the next possibly one and possibly more than one tutorial. The next one along is duplicate and that is pretty straightforward. So if I delete this section, I can then duplicate and it literally will duplicate the entire section. Next one is save to library. So if we click on this little icon, we can give it a name. So we can say intro section. Uh, if we had a Divi Cloud account, we could save it to the Divi Cloud. I don't, so I'm just going to be saving it to my website. And then within this, you also are given the options to save all one rows as individual items and to save all modules as individual items. So if we choose those two things, um, what will happen when we click Save to Library, it will create a section, it will create a row, and it will also save this module. Next option is Save as Global. And if you save this as a global module, what you can do is say you want to put that on every page. So say it was a Contact Me section, maybe that you had the bottom of every page, just above the footer. Um, you could just put that in. You could save it as a global section. You could then put that section on every page. And if you ever needed to make an edit to it, if you edit it on one page, it would automatically edit it across all the other pages. Um, so that's what a global section is. I'm not actually going to save this as a global section at the moment. I can then give my section a category. Um, so that would be, for example, if you wanted intro, you could call your section intro. And if you were saving it to the Divi Cloud and you had maybe 30 different intro sections, um, you could then, uh, with a category of intro, you'd be able to search through and find it. If you wanted, um, say, colourful intro, you could have a, a tag of colourful here. And um, any uh, section or row or module that you tagged with colourful would then come up when you search through your saved items. So once you've given it a name and decided on all these various options, you just click on Save to Library. And now if we then want to add a new section in, if this time we choose the Add from Library option, we can see that I've got my intro section that is saved in the library. I can click on that, say use this section, and it has imported the section from the library for me. And I can then start customizing it. So we've been through the move, the settings, duplicate, save to library. And the final one is, of course, bin. We click on that, it will delete the section. 
The final uh, menu at the end here is other section settings and let's just have a look at those. So save to library we've just been through, save to Divi Cloud so that's just another way of doing that. Split test, that, that's an interesting one. Again, that will be subject of a complete tutorial on its own. But effectively, what you can do is you can save two different versions of a section and you can then change all of the elements in one of those. So you can maybe change the headline or you could change the color of a button. So you can make, make various changes and Divi will then run a test for you automatically. So when visitors come to your website, they will be served one or other of the versions of that section. And uh, you can then measure how effective those two different versions are. And you can maybe run that trial for a week. And at the end of that week, you can see whether changing the headline resulted in more people clicking on a button. You can see whether changing that headline made more people scroll down to the bottom of the page. So really quite a powerful way to start testing the content of your website and one that we will, as I say, spend more time looking at in more detail. The next one is disable and what this will do if you click on it, you'll come up and you will see three different green icons, one for phone, one for tablet and one for desktop. And if you had an item that you didn't want to show on one of these three different formats, so say you didn't want to show this particular section on a phone, you can click on this and if we then go to the phone view, this section will appear greyed out. And the reason it's greyed out rather than just missing entirely, so if we go to tablet, we can see it's present. If we go to desktop, it's present. But if we go to mobile, it's greyed out. And again, you may remember when we went through the various settings in the toolbar down here, you could see show disabled modules at 50% opacity. And it's a personal preference as to whether you like to see that greyed out when it's been disabled, or if you turn this off, you'll find it uh, disappears when it's been disabled and then you can see it on the other sizes. So coming back into the settings again, back into disable, you can see that I've disabled it on phone, but I want to show it on tablet and on desktop. So let's re-enable it again and that's done. Lock is just a little bit of a safety feature, it means you can't go around clicking on it and doing things until you consciously unlock it by clicking on it and you can then start working on it again. So just again, a little safety feature. The next one, copy section, um, if you click on that and you then right click on the center here, you can say uh, paste section and it will paste a copy of the section underneath. Copy section styles, it will copy all the styles that you've set for this section um, and you can then uh, paste those styles onto a different section. So let's change something. And bear in mind, this is the section styles. So what it won't do is copy the styles in either the row or the modules within the section. It's just the section. So if we come into the section uh, background, for example, and we add a background color. So we'll add this background color to the section. And we then come in here and we say copy section styles. If we then create a new section, by default, that will just come up with the, the normal values. If we then come in here and we say paste section styles, it will paste the background that we set up above. So very similar to it's just a normal copy and paste. You can copy the styles from one section and you can paste them onto another one. Reset section styles will do exactly that. We'll reset everything back to default. OK, the next one we've got down here is view modified styles and we click on that. I haven't actually modified anything at the moment. But if, say, again, we went in here and we changed the background color, so we'll go with a different background color this time. We then come back up here and we go with view modified styles. It will show us that we've modified the background color. As that's all that we've changed, that's all that we'll see in here. But it's really useful if you've changed maybe half a dozen different things and you want to know what you've changed. You can just come in here, click on view modified styles and that will show you. So extend section styles is fairly similar to cut and paste, but rather than having um, to cut and paste individually, say you had four different sections on this page. So let's just uh, add some more sections. So we'll have one, two, and then finally a third one. So altogether, we've got four different sections on this page. And if we want to extend the same styling to each of those, we can come in here we can choose extend section styles and we want to extend it to 
all sections on this page. Let me click on extend and it will uh, extend those sections to all four rather than having to go in and paste them onto each of the four. So that's also quite a handy feature if you want to uh, extend styles. And if we had sections on more than one page, we'd actually have the option to extend those sections onto different pages as well. So again, quite a powerful feature. Next one, apply styles to active preset. So currently the preset that we have is a default one. Um, again, I'm not really going to go into presets in great detail here. I do have a tutorial on presets which explains how they work. But if you did have a preset uh, set for this section and you wanted to apply the styles to that active preset, then you can do that from this menu as well. Uh, you can also go in and edit that preset. The next one is go to layer and this basically pops up the layers menu in exactly the same way as choosing the layers menu from down in the toolbar. And finally, generate content with AI. If you have a subscription, uh, but basically when you sign up to Divi, you're allowed 100 uh, uses of an AI content creation tool. Once the 100 uses are up, you have to subscribe on an annual subscription and uh, obviously up to you whether you choose to do that or not. But if you did click on that, uh, well, why don't I'll do it anyway. If we click on that, it will actually generate some content. So here we are. Welcome to Divi Demo, where you can unleash your creativity and discover the limitless possibilities of web design. I've absolutely no idea where it got that content from, but it has written that content for me using AI. So that was the final option. So that's covered uh, all of the options for section. What you'll find if you come into a row is you'll find very similar things. Some won't quite apply because they, they, they will be particular to a row, but all of them basically have the same principle. So you can save it to the library, save it to the cloud. Again, you can do a split test on a row. You can copy it, copy the styles, reset the styles, view the modified styles, all of those things. So really useful. And once again, very similar sort of things in the modules. Final thing we're going to have a look at in this tutorial is the column structure. So if you come into the row and you click on settings, you can see that you've got two columns here. It's very easy to add more columns. You can either come into the first one. So in this case, this is the text and I can click to duplicate it. And then you'll find that I've got three columns, two of which are text and the third one is empty. So if I pop an image in here for the moment, put our piece of cake in here. So you can see we now have three columns. If we want to change the order of those columns. It's very easy just to drag and drop them. So we can just drag the cake into the middle. If we want a fourth column. So we want two columns of cake. We can again click again to get two columns of cake. That allows us to basically change the, the structure of our rows and columns. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. It's introduced you to the concept of sections, rows, columns within rows, and modules within columns. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at this settings menu in a lot more detail. There, it doesn't look like there's many things here, but as soon as you click on the design tab and start to open up some of these things, there are actually a huge number of settings. Uh, so the next tutorial, I'm going to be running through this whole gear icon here and explaining what each of the things does. Meanwhile, if you found this useful, please do give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you next time.